All right, a couple things about the solenoid packs. Um, there's basically two. 99% of the time, it's going to be one of two. Um, the 4R100 here in, in the foreground, this is a pulse width torque converter clutch controlled uh, solenoid pack. This is an E4D version, which has the on off uh, solenoid controlled torque converter clutch. So I heard, I haven't seen one, but I think in, in very early 99, some 4R100s had the on off torque converter clutch. Uh, I've never seen one. I don't know which trucks they were. It was just kind of like, I, I see this written in a lot of books, so I just assume it's probably likely. Ford did a lot of weird stuff like this. Vans were really bad, so it was probably in a van. So anyway, uh, for the most part, you're going to have one of these two. Uh, probably this one. So the 4100 had what they call a, the pulse width modulated torque converter clutch. So that is a different solenoid. That's why this one looks different here. The other three, these are on-off solenoids. If you look at the 401 or the E4OD, it's got four on-off solenoids. The fifth one here, that's the EPC solenoid. That's that's totally different. We're not really talking about that here. Um, if you want to tell which one you have underneath, you sort of can, you sort of can't. So the, the thing is, is if it's from Ford, the 4R100s had an orange plastic cover on the bottom of their solenoid pack for the for the 4R100 pulse with modulated solenoids. The E4OD had a blue one, and this is the the on off solenoid clutch pack. So the, the thing is though, is that these plastic covers, they pop right off. They pop right off and any rebuilder can move them around. They're identical. I mean, they, they, the fitment is identical. They're obviously different color, different part number. So you can't really go by that. So you gotta go back to the top here and look for this, this one here. So this is the shift solenoid two, shift solenoid one, coast clutch solenoid, EPC solenoid, which are, are all gonna be the same. It's this one here that you gotta look at. This is the torque converter clutch solenoid. So this is the on off version. This is the pulse width version. Now if you wanna get deeper into the guts of these things and take one apart, the first thing you gotta do is pop the, pop the plastic cover off. You got to desolder these pins here so you can remove this harness. Uh, the harness cl clips into the block, the aluminum block here. Once you have it desoldered, you can you can push it in and, and uh, release that. Once you get to that point, there's two two torque screws in here and here. That you unscrew and then you can desolder the rest of the tabs from the solenoid packs or the solenoids, and then that comes off. Now you're left with this metal plate, which is actually a retainer. This holds the solenoids in. Um, and it gets bolted, you know, as this thing gets installed into the transmission, it's bolted in firmly. You lift that out, and then the solenoids come right out. It's just two O-rings. Um, they're keyed, so they get clocked in only one way. Um, so it's hard to mess that up. If you put one in upside down, as soon as you put, as soon as you put this on, you'll realize you can't solder the tabs back on. So it's, it's basically 50-50, and you'll know right away that you did it wrong. Uh, Again, these are all Ford packs. Uh, that's all I use. And whenever I come across aftermarket ones, I get rid of them and I tell the customer, you know, hey, we gotta, we gotta get you a Ford pack. So let's get into some testing. I'll show you how I do that. All right, there's two types of testing. Um, there's first, you can check, every, check the ohms for every solenoid, and then there's a mechanical test. Uh, I have a little box that I usually rig up and makes this really easy, but you can't, you can't see anything. Um, so it doesn't really show very well. So I got, I just got a uh, piece of a harness here that I'm just gonna use as like a breakout box to check the. Here's a little schematic just to show you the, the pin out and a little table. This is right out of the ATS manual. So going, uh, <clears throat> this is just a continuity test. So I start at the, at the bottom, the bottom row. So pins one and two, pins one is the power lead. So you want to hook that up to one of your ohm, ohm meter leads. By the way, I'm, I'm having major allergy problems here at Southeastern PA in late April, and I'm just getting clobbered. So shift solenoid two, that should be between uh, 20, and 30, or 20 and 30 ohms. Mine's coming in at 19.5 or 19.3 and it's climbing. So that's, that's a good one. Shift solenoid one. Should be the same thing, 20 to 30 ohms. Mine's 19.4 and climbing, so that one's okay. This is the torque converter clutch. This is the pulse width modulated one. So if it was a if it was the on off one, it should also read 20 to 30. But the pulse width should be 10 to 20. Mine is 13.4. 
Uh, the next one, this is the coast clutch solenoid. This should be between 20 and 30. Mine is 19.5 in climbing. And the last one is the EPC solenoid. This should be between uh, 3 and 5. So this is pin tw uh, 12. Pin 11, pins 11 and 12 on this one. Mine is uh, 4.2. So all these solenoids ohm out good. All right, so our first mechanical test is going to be just to see, just to check the report of these solenoids. So the, what it is is a ball. It's a ball seal. Um, so we just want to listen to to hear what it sounds like, if it's got a good... So you hear that one. That's shift solenoid two right here on the front right. So that one sounds good. Once you get used to how these things sound, you can save yourself a lot of time. So now here's shift solenoid one, front left. That one also sounds good. If it's, if it's bad, it's going to sound soft. But this has a good report to it. Um, the pulse width solenoid doesn't seat like that. So we're going to move back to the, the coast clutch solenoid. That one also has a very affirmative report to it. Um, again, it would be soft. I can actually see the ball moving. You know, it's moving very well. Um, but we're not done yet. So I'm going to go back. We're going to we're going to do an air test. So give me one second to set up for that. I'm only going to do it on one because this is kind of clumsy doing it with uh, the camera here and you know the way I'm doing it. But what I'm looking for here is uh, when I when the, when the ball is shut and I'm applying air to it, I can feel that air all blowing back against my fingers. But when the ball is open, it doesn't hit my fingers because it's all coming out of this hole here and it's going straight up. So, and I test all of them that way, and if everything seats properly, this one's good to go.